step in building our machine learning model that will predict market movements is de determining what type of model we are going to use. So this is going to be a classification problem since we will be determining if the stock market will move up or down um, and if we should buy or sell based on that movement. So the algorithm that we're going to be used will be binary logistic re uh, re regression. Uh, it's much like linear progression in that it predicts a uh, value based on uh, your input variable x, but instead of the actual price, we'll be predicting a probability between 0 and 1. This will be the probability of the uh, stock going up in price or dropping in price. Here we have our equation for our logistic regression uh, function. Here we have our uh, equation here. So x will be our input variables, and b0 and b1 will be our uh, parameters that will be estimated during our um, time when when the model is being fit. Here is is the output of our equation. is also known as the logit function because it is the log odds of the probability of success over the probability of failure. In this case will be the probability of buying over the probability of selling. Over here we have our uh, script that extracts our uh, stock data. Um, here we have the dates for our training data and here we have the dates for our testing data. And this is the list of uh, stocks or crypto that we are looking at. Uh, for this tutorial, we'll be going through Ethereum data, but you can also use um, other stocks or other index funds. Uh, you just need the uh, ticker label here in this list. In this for loop, we're going to iterate through this uh, list and format the data into a pandas data frame. And then we'll then be storing our uh, training data in this uh, folder here called data and we'll be storing our test data here in this folder called uh, test data. Looking at our uh, Jupyter Notebook, this is where the real meat of the uh, code is. Uh, here we'll be importing our libraries. Uh, this is for data visualization uh, here, matplotlib. Uh, computations in NumPy and Pandas for uh, data formatting. We also have sklearn for our model uh, and for checking our uh, metrics and accuracy. Here we are creating our uh, method format data. What this will do is it will drop the unnecessary columns uh, and then it will create a new uh, column called log returns. Uh, this is the, the log returns of our current closing day price. Um, over here we have the uh, signal, a, a new column that we are making. Uh, this will be uh, taking our log re uh, returns and it'll be using that to determine if it will be a buy or a sell. A buy will be a positive one and a negative one will be a sell. And it will be looking at if the log returns is above zero or below zero. Over here, we will be creating our uh, next five columns. Uh, it will be lags one through five. Uh, a lag is the number of days that we are going to look back, starting from our current day uh, closing price. Uh, so say if we had a lag of one, we'll be looking back one day. If we had a lag of two, we'll be looking back two days. Uh, and since we have, we're gonna be having five lags for this example, we'll be looking back uh, five days. So we'll have five different inputs to our logistic regression model. Um, and those, those will be all five of those lags. So after running that, you can see our five lags here, lags one through five. This will be our, our input, variable x. And then we have our signal, which will be also be our input variable y. Here we just check the value counts of signal. It seems we have 175 uh, buy signals and 138 sell signals. So 
seems pretty good. For here, we create our model. Uh, here we have a C value of a very high number. Uh, this is our regularization uh, value. Uh, what this will do is it will prevent overfitting uh, because our regularization strength is very high and it will regularize the uh, parameters in our model to zero. Over here we have our uh, optimization algorithm for our solver. Uh, here we're using the uh, default one. And here we are fitting our model uh, based on our X values, which is lags one through five, and our buy and sell signals, which is one and negative one. Here we have our predictions, uh, which is calculated uh, from our uh, already fitted model. So here we are uh, feeding in our X values in, into our fitted model and it's spitting out our uh, predictions. Here, here we are doing the uh, same thing, but we're getting our buy and sell probabilities. So these are the uh, the predictions that are computed based on the uh, probabilities, and these would be the actual probabilities of our buying and selling. Here uh, we are calculating the number of hits that our uh, machine lo machine learner model is uh, creating. Uh, a definition of a hit is when we make an accurate prediction. So here we have 174 as opposed to 134, so it's a little bit more than half. <clears throat> then we check our predictions here, so it's uh, 251 uh, buys and 62 sells, so it's looks like it's about half there. So it's a bit hard to uh, tell. So here we have our accuracy score. Uh, here we have 56, well, 0.565. Uh, so that's a 56% uh, accuracy. So that's our accuracy score. And then here we compute our strategy. So the way this is computed is multiplying our uh, predictions by our current day log returns. And then we store it in this column called strategy. Once that is done, we create the, um, well, we plot the uh, cumulative sum of our log returns of our strategy and compare it to our buy and hold returns. And here you can see our um, returns seem, seem to be going up over time. So uh, even though we do have an accuracy of just a little over 50% and this seem promising. It does seem that we are uh, making some re uh, returns, but this is very hard to uh, tell because this is all on our training data. So the best way to uh, make certain of this is to add some new data that the model has not seen before. So here we will we will import our uh, test data and format it just like what we did with our training data. Then over here we will uh, also fit our model, well, no, we we aren't going to fit our uh, model. We are going to take the model that we already fitted from our training data, and then we will feed in our uh, testing data, and then we'll see what the predictions are that, that we are going to make, as well as create our new uh, strategy column for our test data. So then it's in, we check our predictions. I uh, notice how we have a smaller value count for our um, buy and sell predictions. Uh, this is because we are looking at a smaller time frame than our training data. Here we compute the accuracy score. So it's about the same as our training data, 0.5625. Uh, it's a little bit less than our training data, but that's fine. It's almost the same. And here we have our uh, buy and sell probabilities calculated from, from the same model uh, using our testing data. And here we plot the same uh, returns of our strategy compared to the buying and holding uh, based on our training, on our testing data of, of, of a 
Ethereum. So here, um, well, while we do see a huge dip around day 19 in our strategy, uh, it is performing pretty well compared to the buy and hold uh, returns of of our um, of of Ethereum. So there there is that, and it also seems to shoot up towards the end. So so while uh, there is a dip, and you know the uh, graph is going to look a bit rougher because it is over a shorter number of days. Um, it's this does look promising. So uh, we do need to run some more tests on this to to, uh, de to determine to see if the uh, model can predict stocks to a uh, good 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 degree. So. Here we have we have another tool called the ROC curve or the receiver operating characteristic. What it does is it plots the uh, true positive rate on the y-axis, and it also plots the uh, false positive rate on the x-axis. So a true positive rate is when we would correctly classify uh, the uh, current day's closing price as a buy, and a uh, False positive rate is when we would incorrectly classify uh, the current day's closing price as a buy. So, as you can see here, we had about uh, this is our training data. We had about a 56% uh, accuracy, so that's a little bit more than uh, 50. This would be a straight line. Uh, so it's not bad. It's not very good either. Um, that being said, uh, this is probably the best you could do with uh, real, uh, real raw data. Um, so here, like I said before, we have our uh, y-axis, which is the true positive rate, and x-axis is the uh, false positive rate. So if we wanted this to be uh, a more accurate model, uh, we would have more area underneath our ROC curve. So it would go something like this, like a upside down L. Of course, we have a point, uh, fifty percent, fifty percent accuracy, roughly. So this will be almost a straight line. And no surprise here, we have almost the same thing with our testing data. Uh, maybe it's a little bit flatter. It's a little bit hard to uh, tell, but uh, this does seem to be somewhat accurate. Now we're going to plot our probabilities. So here we have our training data. And here we have our new method called plot probabilities. Yes, so here we will plot probabilities of our training data. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see because we have quite a few days on a very small graph. Um, but as you can see, for the most part, uh, from what I can gather from this graph, is that our buy probability seems to be above our sell probability. So, and our closing price seems to be going up consistently. So let's, let's take a look at our uh, testing data, our uh, buy and sell probabilities for our testing data. This is a little bit easier to see because it's on a smaller number of days. Now let's compare this to our closing price of Ethereum. So as you can see here, our uh, buy probability tends to shoot up when the closing price dips around day nine. And also really, really in interestingly enough, our sell probability also dips on that exact same day, almost like a mirror image. So the uh, model seems to be picking up on that on new data. So that seems to be working pretty well. Another interesting thing to uh, take note is on day 13 is, is when our um, buy and sell probabilities seem to uh, actually uh, overlap and switch places. This is also our highest uh, closing price and it's the highest uh, probability for uh, selling and it's the lowest probability for buying. So this model seems to know um, when to buy low and when to sell high. So if I were going to use this uh, model uh, for 
let's say, um, trading Ethereum, um, I would just focus on the buy and sell probabilities 